can't grab it in time. there at the end just messing around with uh, Duke Ellington tune mood indigo nothing to do with indigo girls uh, it's from 1931 the copyright and uh, composers are Duke Ellington Albany Bagard I have that in the book Albany Bagard I've also seen on the internet Barney Bagard so I guess he went by both names and a little suspicious to me Irving Mills because the tune was published by Mills Publishing and apparently there was a phenomenon going back 60s, 50s, 40s, and beyond where the executive or the, or the publishing company owner, um, you know, would take credit for being a co-composer of a tune. I'm just thinking, like, I don't have details for you, but something like, you know, maybe a 1955 tune by Chuck Berry and um, who was the guy, the, uh, the DJ whose life kind of ended sadly. Um, I can't even think of it now. Uh, he was big in the 50s, and then there was a payola scandal. But apparently these guys would often, you know, Duke Ellington, uh, Barney Bagard, and Tom Colhane, like, you know, throw their name on there so they would get royalties and they would get all kinds of extra money. Um, I'm also reading a book. It's an interesting book uh, by Will Friedwald. Very interesting book if you're like me and you're really into music and songs and history and lyrics and stuff like that. He says that uh, Mitchell Parrish, who I believe was the uh, lyricist for the tune Stardust, Mitchell Parrish at one point was anonymously creating lyrics for this tune at the time titled um, Dreaming Blues, which ultimately morphed into and became Mood Indigo as we know it today. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to do a separate video where you can just kind of hear the arrangement and then see the tab, because I've got a tab here. But... Um, I think it'd be good if like you could see the tab for the whole time that I'm playing it. Uh, you know. Somebody has a suggestion of putting in like eighth note values and whole note and half note things. So I've been trying to do that lately. Um, it's kind of a oxymoron in a sense because if somebody does not read music at all, is it really helping them? Maybe it is. Maybe for somebody who knows the basics. But yeah, I'm gonna do a separate video where you just have uh, a chance to look at this for a longer time. Let me go to page two. Um, yeah, so that'll be up soon. It'll be up a little after this current video that we're working on now. All right, so let's just take a look. Um, it's got an interesting set of chord changes very ethereal sounding, very dreamy. Um, yeah, it, it does the same thing as tunes like um, Take the A-Train, another Duke Ellington, Dolly Strayhorn thing, and also Girl from Ipanema, um, the Joe Beam. Uh, it starts, after we get through the intro, which I'll show you in a minute, it starts on an A-flat, major seven, then it goes to the two chord, but the two as a dominant seven. So, you know, normally in the key of A-flat, you have... This, normally it would be uh, B flat minor seven, but this goes to. Goes to B flat seven. So that's kind of cool. Um, it does lots of nice things, like it goes from an E flat minor seven to an E flat seven, sharp five, sharp nine, and then back to, back to the A flat major seven. Anyway, um, I think what I'll do is I'll start to walk through the arrangement now. So in the beginning, there's a little thing here. This chord is kind of like a C minor, seven flat five, but with a, a sharp five or a flat six, whatever you want to call it, the A flat on the first string. So I came up with this fingering, just bar across. So we've got fourth fret fingers on strings one, two, and four. The other two strings are covered by the bar at the third fret. Then you 
play string two, string one, move it down a fret. So I'm doing the same picking pattern, except for that one I just messed up. Now we're going to go to this little chord. Again, I'll be posting the tab. I'm going to go two C's, two F's, and a C. Now we're going to have this one. We're going to bar strings four, five, and six. E flat, B natural, and then an up for an E flat octave. It's a four bar intro. Here it is one more time. This is like a C minor seven flat five with a flat six. Down chromatically. There's this little weird chord, which I'm not even going to hazard a guess as to what we would call it. And then this chord, E flat, B natural, E flat octave. Now we're into the tune. This is an A flat major seven. Finger three is barring the first three strings at the eighth fret. Move chromatically down and back. Going to, you know, this is your stock B flat seven bar chord. We're going to add the pinky on the first string for a B flat nine to cover the melody. Again, after the intro. I'm going to jump up for an E flat minor seven. Finger three is covering the first four strings. The middle finger is covering the twelfth, blotting out the fifth. And now we've got. flat 7 with a sharp 9 and a sharp 5. Going back into our original chord. A flat major 7. All right, let's bypass the intro one more time from the beginning of the main melody. This is B flat 9, E flat minus 7, E flat 7 sharp 9, sharp 5, landing on A flat major 7. Now a little fill. it is is E flat F G B flat A flat G okay and then we're back to kind of repeats now this is different E9 with B on the first string B minus 7 this is B minus 7 with A on the first string um, and then we've got this E7, landing on E flat 7. Now, 4th fret, 6th string, bass note. Put the rest of an A flat 7. Then we've got F diminished. And then we've got A flat 7 here, bar chord. Jumping up to A flat 9. Toggle that 13th fret F, and then back to the E flat on the first string. Now we're going to have bar all 6. This is a D flat 6. Hit it twice more, then a G flat 7. Into the E flat 7 sharp 5, sharp 9. Back again to that familiar. Hold this for a whole note, four beats. Now we've got the bottom of an A flat major seven. We've got the A flat, we've got the G, and we've got the C. Now we go to an A diminished. Back to a full A flat major seven, a little regular stock, fifth string root, B flat seven. Jump up to this B flat nine, kind of where we played it earlier. And it goes cr down chromatically, so it's kind of interesting. Um, you might even learn a new chord or two here, or a new, new fingering. This is gonna be, uh, okay, I'm borrowing the first four, I've got the middle finger on the third string, I've got the pinky on the first string, that's a B flat nine. 
you move the first string down chromatically to the B natural, that's a B7 flat 9. Take that off, go to the B flat, and you've got a stock regular B flat 7. Um, and then a little quick bass fill. Now we're moving to a B flat minor 7. This is just stock fifth string root E flat 7. Now this is kind of a cool thing. We've got pinky barring the first three, ring fingers on that G, index is on the fourth fret of the fifth string, D flat. Now we're going to walk down. This is going to be um, A flat over C. So I'm barring here, first four strings, and I've got the C on the fifth. Okay, now B diminished. Probably know that B diminished, we've used it before. B flat minor seven. This is gonna be A7 flat five. Now we're gonna repeat the phrase that we just did. A flat diminished, A flat major seven, plain B flat seven. Same as we did before, now a slightly different bass fill. That's why we're going to have to have the separate video where you can just see the tab. I'm going to take it again from the main melody. It's going to be a kind of a long video, but bear with me. I'll go a little too fast just to speed it up. E9, B minus 7, E7, and then landing on E flat 7 into this A flat thing, F diminished, E diminished, A flat 7, A flat 9 way up, D flat 6, G flat 7, E flat 7 sharp 5 sharp 9, At the bottom of this A flat major seven, A flat diminished, A flat major seven, stock B flat seven, jump up here for the B flat nine, moving chromatically down on the first string, little bass fill, moving to B flat minor nine, E flat seven root on the fifth string. Then this little weird, it's actually uh, an E-flat 7 with D-flat in the bass. Barring the first three. This is A-flat over C. This is B diminished, B minus 7. So this is, along with the open fifth string, it's an A7-flat 5. Going to repeat that last phrase. A-flat diminished, A-flat major 7, B-flat 7. Chromatic thing over the B flat seven, little different bass fill. B flat seven, E flat seven, 13 actually. Landing on E flat nine. That's just a little chromatic walk down. So what this is, is really, it's an A-flat-7, so I'm going to go... Now you can walk up here, D-flat, major 7, and then this is the one I couldn't grab in time. So you might want to just do a single note there, you can just do the B. I like the sound of it, but it's too hard, it's too hard to get to it quickly. And then we're just going to do a little cheat here, which is going to be a D-flat... Nine, but just momentarily I'm going to leave out the third, which is kind of a no-no. And then this is just the first four strings of a cowboy E7. You know, E7 is here. So we want the D to be the bass note. And then we're going to have this E flat 7. 
okay? Then we're back to this bottom of an A, flat major seven. A flat major seven. Fifth string, root, B flat seven. B flat minor nine. E flat seven. This is an E seven flat nine. E flat seven flat nine, sorry. Now we've got A flat. B diminished, B flat minor seven, E flat seven, sharp five, sharp nine, sharp nine. And then if you can reach the bass note, it's kind of fatter. Barring the first four strings with the pinky, and I've got the fourth fret A flat on the sixth string. And then, it's kind of an awkward place here. It's, you know, on my guitar, it's the very top fret. But there's a thing you can do, just as a general thing, even if you don't do it on this tune. Over the, over, directly over the top fret, if you just touch the string lightly with your index, you can, you can kind of use your ring finger to strum it. Just a little gimmick. Um, all right, so that's Mood Indigo. Um, as I said, I'll be following up with another video where you can just see a closer look at the, uh, the tab. Um, it's one of the most beautiful Duke Ellington tunes, and maybe, maybe my favorite. Um, Prelude to a Kiss is nice. Somehow I think I like this one better. Uh, of course, there's a couple of other ones he did with Billy Strayhorn that are gorgeous. I mean, Lush Life is my, my favorite Billy Strayhorn tune. Uh, I should really do a video on that. Uh, Lush Life, it's got the whole deal. It's got the the really interesting verse that segues into the tune. The lyrics are fantastic. Uh, there's a whole story behind that one. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy the tune. I hope you can make something out of it. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Uh, I'm trying to get the subscriber base up. I'm at 801 right now. Uh, so if you, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, if you have any guitar player friends, musician friends, uh, let them know about it. And uh, throw me a like if you think it was decent. Otherwise, have fun, keep playing, and I hope you have a great day. See you on the next video.